بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعزائي طلاب وطالبات المستوى الرابع بكالوريا طب جراحة الفم والأسنان أهلا بكم في مستهل اللقاء أو الحلقة التعليمية الثانية عشر ضمن مقرر طب الفم في هذا اللقاء سنواصل الحديث عن Oral White Legends Part 2 In the last lecture we had talking about four of the most presented white legions in the oral cavity started with lichen planus, liquinoid reaction, lobus erythematosus and also we had talking about the chemical burn. We had talking about those four legions regarding their clinical features, their differential diagnosis, their final diagnosis and their management. We'll continue about the white legions as a part two white legions for the 12th lecture. The references of this lecture, Handbook of Oral Medicine and Perkett's Oral Medicine. At the end of this lecture, the student should be able to differentiate the clinical findings of white lesions with the other oral lesions and also should be able to diagnose the lesions which is presented in the oral cavity as a white lesions and correlate their causes and risk factors with the differential and definite diagnosis and also at the end of this lecture the students should be able to reach the definite diagnosis for those white lesions and provide the best management for those lesions and also should be able to integrate the clinical findings with the systemic condition and the, the present complaint of the patient. In this lecture, we will talk about many of white lesions, starting from pseudomembranous candidiasis as a in, 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 uh, fungal infection, which presented in the oral cavity as a white lesions, and also we called it oral trash. And also we'll talk about the chronic hyperplastic candidiasis, which is another fungal infection presented in the oral cavity as a white lesion. And also we'll continue talking about other lesions such as white spongenevus and dyskeratosis congenita, which are a hereditary white lesions. And also we'll talk about other white lesions such as frictional keratosis, nectonic stomatitis, and also the smoker keratosis same name and also we'll talk about the leukoblechia submucous fibrosis as well as biostomatitis vegetans. All those white lesions we'll talk about them in detail starting from the etiology and the pathogenesis of those lesions and also we'll talk about the clinical feature of all of the white lesions presented in, in this lecture and also we'll talk about their investigation, differential diagnosis, and the final management procedure for each of these white lesions. The pseudomembranous candidiasis, the first one, also can called as an oral thrush or candidiasis. The majority of these cases are caused by fungal infection which is the candida albicans. The age is important factor in the development of oral candidiasis. So more commonly present in the age extremities. So the older, the most older and the most younger patients the presence of iron deficiency also are associated with pseudomembranous candidiasis. We can call it also cydrobenia, so leading to thrush in the adulthood, as well as the presence of HIV infection or antibiotic or steroid drug therapy if the patient is under long-term treatment by antibiotic or long-term treatment by steroids can be presented with oral candidiasis. So these drugs can disrupt the oral microflora equivalence. Soft creamy yellow batches are the clinical appearance of candidal infection they, that affect large areas of the oral mucosa and these plaques can be webbed of so, if you use a piece of gauze and try to web these white patches, it 
can be rubbed off so after removal reveal underlying erythematous base differential diagnosis chemical burn traumatic ulcer necrotic ulcers the diagnosis of candidiasis smear of suspected thrush the oral thrush can be diagnosed by using a smear or taking a smear layer from the lesion and stain by gram stain or periodic acid shift reagent to demonstrate large members of fungal hyphae and blastospores so you will see the candidal the candida albicans fungal hyphae a swab or oral rinse can be taken and sift for culture so you, you can use a swab or instruct the patient to rinse and spit off the sample the management of the oral thrush is use of topical agent such as amphotricin or nistatine or myconazole which is an antifungal drugs the new generations of antifungal such as fluconazole itroconazole are also extremely effective within 7 to 15 days to treat those lesions the underlying factors such as cedrobenia or hiv diseases or uh, the patient who is under long term of corticosteroid treatment or antibiotics should all these factors should be eliminated to permit the oral lesions to resolve the second lesion is the chronic hyperblastic candidiasis chronic hyperblastic so it is chronic developed long long period of time and hyperblastic so there is a hyperblastic lesions and so it's called a uh, candida leucoblechia the etiology and pathogenesis similar to pseudomonas candidiasis and particularly related to tobacco use so, so those patients are commonly practice smoking or chewable tobacco habit clinically the candida leucoblechia presented as a second irregular or smooth white plaques as we see in the clinical picture most frequently at the commissures of the mouth and the dorsal of the tongue the white plaques does not rub it off this is the only type of the candidiasis or the candidal infection of the oral cavity which cannot be rubbed off the pseudomonas candidiasis cannot be rubbed off the oral thrush as we mentioned also can be rubbed off this form of candidiosis may occur in mucocutaneous syndrome differential diagnosis of candida leucoblechia is the hairy leucoblechia and white spongy nevus and the leucoedema as well as the uh, proliferative verrucous leucoblechia also similarly presented in the oral cavity with the clinical features of candida leucoblechia the diagnosis mucosal biopsy will reveal the different diagnosis should be so performed and you will find the candida hyphae, hyphae as a evidence of the causative factor candida albicans and you will find a keratin layers and hyperblastic epithelium with chronic inflammatory cell infiltrates this is the histopathological findings of candida leucoblechia management of candida leucoblechia systemic antifungal agents leading to clinical and histological resolution after two to three weeks for the resistant lesions you need to perform a surgical excision for this lesions especially if there is a signs of epithelial dysplasia and tobacco habit should be stopped since the lesions are likely to recur if smoking is not eliminated so 
if the cause is presented and this, the patient continue his or her habit, the recurrence of the lesion will be occur. The third lesion of this lecture is the white sponge nevus. So white sponge nevus is a hereditary benign condition with an autosomal uh, con uh, dom dominant as due to a point mutation of keratin 4 and 30 genes. So it is a genetic inherited condition related to three, uh, 4 to 30 13 uh, uh, gene mutation clinically we will find a deeply folded white lesions at several mucosal sites so it is widespread particularly in the buccal mucosa the most common site the other site in the body may be involved including the mucosa of vagina and vulva and also the anus esophageal mucosa are be also might be presented with white sponge nevus. Also, the develop it is developmental in origin. The white sponge nevus cannot be appeared as you, you can't find it until the second decade of the patient's life. Differential diagnosis, cheek showing or cheek biting, leukoedema, leukoblechia, and lichen blenus. Diagnosis. The diagnosis is, is firstly made on the clinical findings and the clinical presentation of the lesion, which cannot be rubbed off and widely spread it in many sites in the oral cavity, most commonly the buccal mucosa, and also the history of the lesion appearance at the second life of the second decade of life of your patient. And also, if there is any other member of the patient's family complain from this inherited lesion, the biopsy will show hyperkeratosis with edematous keratinocytes and will see a pre-nuclear condensation of keratin. There is no epithelial dysplasia, so it is a benign condition. How to manage white sponge nevus? No treatment is required since it is a benign condition and it has no malignant transformation potential. The fourth lesion is the dyskeratosis congenita. Dyskeratosis congenita is also an inherited syndrome in which patients undergo premature aging as well as predisposition for malignancy. So, the gene responsible for X-linked dyskeratosis congenita encodes protein which is called this carrying gene. So the white sponge nevus and the dyskeratosis congenita shared the same information which is both of them are inherited and associated with gene mutations. The clinical features the manifestations become evident in the first 10 years of life but the white sponge nevus presented in the second decade of life this is the first decay of life reticular skin pigmentation can be founded in the oral cavity and in the upper chest with dysplastic nails of the fingers and also it is all these characterize the cutaneous manifestations of this keratosis congenita the mucosal erosions and areas of leukoblechia will be founded in the oral cavity and are potentially malignant so this lesion, this keratosis congenita, is associated with premalignant transformation in opposite to that of white sponge nevus, which is benign and have non malignancy transformation. Approximately 30% of the leukoblechial lesions progress to oral cancer, 
so as we mentioned before it is associated with malignancy transformation rapidly progressing periodontal diseases and thrombocytopenia aplastic anemia may be also associated with dyskeratosis congenita this is the clinical appearance of dyskeratosis congenita diagnosis of dyskeratosis congenita depend on the history and clinical presentation mainly if the biopsy is performed it will be non-specific character showing hyperkeratosis epithelial atrophy and severity of dysplasia management of this keratosis congenita first the condition is managed symptomatically so you will treat the symptoms of your patient careful observation of the oral mucosa biopsy of suspicious areas so it is associated with malignancy transformation it is very important to perform a biopsy of any suspicious areas to rule out any type of malignancy transformation the systemic manifestations also are managed medically by referring the patient for the specialized physician differential diagnosis of this keratosis congenita candida leukoplakia and white spongenevus are the two lesions which are clinically very similar to this keratosis congenita the next lesion is the frictional keratosis frictional keratosis from its name due to friction of the oral mucosa so causing a chronic irritation of the oral mucosa it's an analog to a callus which forms on the area of the skin that chronically rubbed as the sole of the feet so if there is any area exposed to chronic irritation friction so a callus will be formed so in the oral mucosa keratosis will be resulted the most frequent cause of irritation in the mouth is the trauma and chewing any site in the mouth can be affected by frictional keratosis the most common site being the lips and lateral border of the tongue and the edentulous ridge which chronically exposed to friction the lesion may be well demarcated or diffused depending on the cause of the friction if the cause of friction is for example cut showing so the frictional keratosis will be widely spread diffused on the buccal mucosa on the chewing side if the cause is a sharp cusp for the tooth or malformed restoration so the frictional keratosis lesion will be localized well demarcated the surface is homogeneously white but may have a thickened corrugated appearance the diagnosis of frictional keratosis depend mainly on the clinical diagnosis and the clinical and the medical and social history of the patient a biopsy often needed to confirm the diagnosis and rule out any malignancy transformation or any other inflammatory process microscopy of a uh, biopsy taken from frictional keratosis will show hyperkeratosis without any type of dysplasia and the scattered chronic inflammatory cells also will be presented in the underlying connective tissue of that lesions management removing of the cause is the, is the key tra tra treatment or the key management of chronic irritation so if the patient is a cut sewer, you should advise him or her to stop the habit if the patient had a malformed restoration 
filling or bridge or whatever you should remade and correct this malformation if the patient has has the habit of cheek bite habitual cheek biting you should ask him to prevent this and stop this habit the rough surfaces as we mentioned should be corrected and also the other causative factors should be managed sometimes the profession of acrylic guard when the patient complaining from cheek biting or what we called it a night proxism should be protected by acrylic guard or what also we called it night guard to prevent the night cheek or lip biting there is no evidence of any chronic trauma along the predisposing alone predispose the development of malignancy so the patient which can be developed with a uh, chronic uh, with malignancy commonly associated with other risk factors for malignancy transformation such as smoking and cut chewing and other causative factors such as sun x-ray or malnutrition or other risk factors for malignancy the other lesion is the nyctonic stomatitis or smoker's keratosis so from its name due to nicotonic releasing from smokers patients most frequently occurring due to tobacco related keratosis in the mouth can be associated with pipe cigar or cigarettes so all the types of smoking can be resulted in resulted in nicotonic stomatitis the hyperkeratosis of nicotonic stomatitis is reactive to heat generated by tobacco product and also the chemicals which are presented in the smoked tobacco clinically nicotonic stomatitis characteristic site of nicotonic stomatitis is the involvement of the hard palate as we see in this clinical picture there is a wide wide batch with pinpoint red dots these red dots represent the minor salivary gland salivary gland duct openings so it is inflamed minor salivary gland duct openings due to the effect of the heat and the chemicals presented in the smoked tobacco also predominantly white there are erythema with punctuate red dots as we mentioned representing the inflamed minor salivary gland duct orifices as we mentioned the diagnosis of nicotinic stomatitis depend on the history of tobacco use and also the clinical appearance of the lesion biopsy is not usually indicated since the risk of new plastic transformation is very low management at first the patient should discontinue all types of smoking pipe or cigarette or whatever it's important to if the uh, tobacco usage this uh, this keratosis uh, nicotinic stomatitis it is very important indicator for tobacco usage so you can if the patient light for you and he does not speak the facts or the real about his habits or her habits about smoking you can find these clinically indicative findings to smoking so may indicate the risk of dysplasia and also neoplasia and other susceptible at uh, the other susceptible sites so if you find the clinic stomatitis in the heart blood of your patient you will check his tongue his buccal mucosa his or her uh, vestibules to find out any dysplasia or neoplasia at these other susceptible sites for oral malignancies leukoplakia leukoplakia as we know it's a clinical term used to describe white patch or black 
on the oral mucosa that cannot be rubbed off and we can't characterize this clinical lesion as any specific disease so we can characterize this finding which is a white patch or black to any other specific disease so we will call it a leukoplakia most of the cases of leukoplakia are associated with tobacco habits and the alcohol hematinic deficiency such as what occur in bloomer vinson syndrome and also chronic trauma may play a role in the development of leukoplakia lesions in the developed countries the transformation rate of leukoplakia to oral cancer is low about one to two percent in five years but this may increase in the indian sub content about 50 15 to 20 percent of the indian subcontinent are associated with malignancy transformation of leukoblakia lesions most of the cases cases of leukoblakia occur in the middle aged and also in the older populations the most common sites of leukoblakia development is the tongue lower lip and the retromolar regions and the floor of the mouth uh, leukoplakia in the floor of the mouth has a higher rate of malignancy transformation than other sites clinically leukoplakia may have a range appearance from flat white patches to wart like lesions and also it can be presented as a thickened leathery patches to mixed white patches which called a speckled leukoplakia the speckled leukoplakia are a white leukoplakia lesions with red dots or mixed with erythematous dots or white we can call it a speckled leukoplakia which high which has the highest malignancy transformation Diagnosis of leukoblakia lesions depend on the biopsy, which is mandatory since there are many of the lesions similar to carcinoma in the clinical appearance. In addition, it is essential to determine the severity of any epithelial dysplasia that may be present. So, you will perform a biopsy and which can reveal a mild moderate or severe types of dysplasia or even a carcinoma inside you then if there is an absence of this plastic changes no treatment of the leukoblakia is required apart from periodic re-examination so we will emphasize on the re-examination periodically every six months to rule out any development of any dysplastic changes if these lesions presented with dysplastic changes proven with histopathological findings this will depend its management depends on the severity of epithelial dysplasia in mild dysplastic leukoblakia you can manage it conservatively with emphasis on the elimination of the cause so from the history you will find the cause of this leukoblakia lesion and advise the patient or instruct the patient to stop his or her habit this when you find by the histopathology a mild dysplasia if you perform a re biopsy after three months three months you need to assess the effect of the measures you had performed to your patient at the correction of the etiological factor if the biopsy reveal a severe dysplastic changes changes should be managed as a cancer and 
the patient should refer to maxillofacial surgeon to remove this lesion and treat it as a cancer due to the risk of malignancy change. The other lesion is the submucous fibrosis. Submucous fibrosis, one of the most important pre-malignant lesions due to development of fibrous tissue in the buccal mucosa and the palate of the patient and the primary causative factor the primary etiological factor of the submucous fibrosis is the chewing of betel nut which is a common habit in the Indian population the chronic exposure also to chili papers and also prolonged deficiency of iron and vitamin B complexes particularly the folic acid also and etiological factors for development of oral submucous fibrosis in addition excessive production and inception degradation of collagen by fibroblast leads to development of oral submucous fibrosis clinically this lesion most suffers presented with the age of 20 to 40 years old at the time of presentation the clinical character of oral submucous fibrosis characterized by irregular flat white lesions which develop in the mouth particularly in the buccal mucosa and the soft palate of the patient also the esophagus and the pharynx can be also affected the most striking feature of the oral submucous fibrosis is the formation of marred fibrous bands that can be palpated in the clinical examination in the cheek and the soft palate so it is very important to perform a good clinical examination digital examination and palpate the underlying tissue of these lesions to find out the fibrous bands which is the characteristic of the oral submucous fibrosis the diagnosis so is depend on the manual detection the digital palpation digital examination of the fibrinous bands within the mouth and the associated rhythmus <coughs> So these lesions can be associated with trismus. The patient can't open his or her mouth due to the development of the fibrous bands on his buccal tissue. The biopsy often worsens the condition but may be necessary to determine if there is white lesion containing epithelial dysplasia. It's very important to differentiate this condition from fibrosis and scarring uh, secondary to injury so it is very important to take a very detailed medical and dental history from your patient to rule out any history of trauma or surgery which can lead to scar the scars can resemble the bands of or the fibrous bands of oral submucous fibrosis in addition it is very important in the management of this treatment is to discontinue the habit which is the areca nut chewing for the patient with restricted opening manual stretching exercises should be performed to reassure or reassuring the mouth opening of the patient steroid injections inside the fibrous pants also can be helpful to degrade the fibrous pants in addition the enzymes that digest the fibrous tissues such as chemotrypsin as well as hyaluronidase also can be helpful to be injected directed directly in the affected tissues leading to degradation of the fibrous band 
of this legions and the patient must be reviewed closely and approximately one third of the patient associated with submucous fibrosis will develop an oral cancer as we mentioned above it is the most important white lesion which can be associated with high grade of malignancy transformation the other white lesion is biostimulitis vegetans biostimulitis vegetans is a chronic postular mucocutaneous disorder so it is bio means postular so there is a pus formation often seen in association with inflammatory bowel disease which is a systemic condition of GIT such as also the uh, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis these Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis are an examples of inflammatory bowel diseases the cause of oral mucosal lesions is until now unknown clinical feature of biostimulitis vegetans first of all can occur anywhere in the in the oral cavity but is seen most frequently on the labial or the buccal mucosa the erythema progress to tiny yellow pustules and here I should ask you what is the meaning of pustules as we studied in the lecture of the clinical prescription of of the legions so if you remember the pustules is a pus containing physicals or bullae so containing a pus so erythma progress to tiny yellow pustules measuring 2 to 3 millimeters in diameter males affected twice frequently as females and the condition is most often seen in the third to the sixth decade of life diagnosis of biostomatitis vegetans depend on the clinical examination and the history of the inflammatory bowel disease and so we will also repeat our emphasizement about the medical history of the patient the medical history of the patient so you need to take a detailed clinical examination and thorough medical and dental and other types of history so the medical history will help you in the diagnosing some lesions diagnosis is more difficult to achieve and 25 percent of patients who have no any bowel or GIT diseases the biopsy of oral mucosa is unfortunately non-specific showing chronically inflamed mucosa superficial abscess so we called it biostomatitis and ulceration as well as necrosis management of biostomatitis vegetans started with successful management of bowel involvement so you need to refer your patient for GIT specialist and this management of the systemic condition will associated with improved oral legions the oral legions can also be treated with oral antiseptics so there is an ulceration of the postules and bus secretion local corticosteroids can be also useful and systemic administration of antimicrobial agent and metronidazole to manage the infection in conclusion through this lecture we had talking about many of the white legions starting with pseudomonas candidiasis oral chronic hyperplastic candidiasis white bone genevas and dyskeratosis congenita as well as frictional keratosis and nicotinic stomatitis and the leukoblechia submucous fibrosis and biostomatitis vegetans the assignment of this lecture is the 
student should be present a clinical cases of any of white lesions and this assignment also with its explanation will be provided in the assignment section as a word document under title of assignment 12 thank you very much dear students